praise God. I'm back, guys. I am back. I am back. I am back. Those of you who joined us in the first live, you received a mouthful of information, revelation, inspiration, motivation, all the shuns. Amen. I am back for one simple reason, that the video did not save. And I know that it was nothing that we did this end, but I also know the plan of the enemy. Hallelujah. So I will praise the Lord. His praise will continually be in my mouth because God is the one who is the author and the finisher of what we are saying. But I encourage you right now to make sure you're on the email list. We need a way for you to be contacting us and us to be contacting you with the without the intervention of IG and FB, because I cannot believe it. But at the same time, I am not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. So welcome back online. I'm going to share with you as much as I can what I spoke to you. I will save it down again, and we shall see whether this video will save. But I am so determined that the enemy is going to be defeated. We are going to raise up an altar of worship and of praise right now, and we're going to decree right now that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the people and they that dwell therein. We're going to decree that God is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he alone is Lord. Why am I doing this? I am coming back literally within 15 minutes of our original video because our original video miraculously and amazingly unexplainably was taken offline. And I know why because the truth that we're releasing right now is about to set you free. But the word of God comes like a fiery stream into your heart and into your life. And the devil is a liar. He will not steal what God has ordained for you in this season. He will not steal your opportunity. He will not steal the things that God has ordained for you to possess. He said upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the, the house of Jacob or Joseph shall possess their possessions. You shall possess what God has for you. You shall possess your marriage. You shall possess supernatural marriage. You shall possess your ordained spouse. You shall possess the blessings that God has laid up for you in that wonderful relationship called marriage in this season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So let's just cover this place in the blood of Jesus. Let every confusion end right now. We take authority and we decree that no weapon, no weapon fashioned against these videos, no weapon fashioned against the word of God, no weapon fashioned against the revelation of the most high shall prosper against your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You can understand supernatural marriage is the highest gift of God for mankind. Supernatural marriage is what God has ordained in these last days, in these end times, to use as a vehicle and as a, as, as a vessel to release the power of God into the earth. Supernatural marriage is what God has ordained to carry literally the presence of God into communities. He is not going to use in the days of old. Jesus used boats. In the days of old, Jesus used what the disciples had. And what did they have? They had boats. He got into the boat of Peter in Luke 5. He said, will you give me your boat to preach the gospel? And they said, yes. But now God is saying, do you want to be married? Why? Because he's raising up supernatural marriages. He's releasing singles into marriage and raising up God-ordained unions, God-ordained marriages, God-ordained relationships. He's doing that for his purposes and for his glory. So supernatural marriage is the vessel that God has supernaturally ordained in these last days to release and to carry the, 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 the mantle of, of prayer, of revival, of dominion, of multiplication, and to literally affect the world. The God wants to use your relationship for his purposes. And it is called supernatural marriage. And I'm telling you, my spirit is angry. Why? Because the enemy is trying to defeat the cause of the word of God. He's trying to hinder the word of God. Apostle Paul said, you know, a great and effective door has opened to me. But there are many adversaries. So saints of God, I encourage you offline, pray, pray, 
pray and keep on praying because my breakthrough, your breakthrough, the breakthrough of so many marriages, so many weddings is predicated upon us coming together. There is a gang up in the spirit against marriage. There is a gang up in the spirit against God ordained relationships. This gang up did not begin today, but now the devil is so afraid he's made it obvious. When you see the devil coming out and showing himself, let me tell you, it's because he's about to be defeated. And in this month, the Lord has mandated me to speak to you about raising up an altar of praise for supernatural marriage. But I just want to show you what are the signs, what are the ingredients, what are you looking for? What is supernatural marriage? What is supernatural marriage? There is normal marriage. There is natural marriage. There is normal relationship. There is natural relationship. But supernatural marriage carries with it certain signs, certain ingredients. There are certain things you can look out for to identify supernatural marriage. Amen. So bless every one of you that has come back online. For those of you who haven't, I just pray that you will share this video as much as you can. And I trust God that this time it will save down and you will have access to it over the next 24 hours. God bless you. Amen. So what is supernatural marriage? Number one, I've said it already, supernatural marriage is a covenant relationship between male and female that God ordains for his purposes and for his glory. That is supernatural marriage. It is a God-ordained relationship. It is a God-ordained relationship that he brings together between male and female, and he brings them into a covenant union, into a covenant relationship of love for his purposes and for his glory. There are other relationships that are supernatural in the word of God. I spoke to you just now about David and Jonathan. If you read in 1 Samuel 18.1, 1 Samuel 18.1, the Bible says that Jonathan loved David as his own soul as soon as he has finished speaking. So instantly he began, he connected in love with David, not in an unholy love, in a covenant love. Why? For God's ordained purposes. We have another supernatural relationship and that's between the babies in the womb, the baby in the womb of Mary reacted to the baby in the womb of Elizabeth. And Elizabeth said that the babe, as soon as you spoke, the babe in my womb leapt. What was that? There was a supernatural connection. There was a supernatural love between the baby in the womb of Elizabeth, who was John the Baptist, and the baby in the womb of Mary, who was Jesus. Why? There was a covenant purpose. There was a covenant purpose that was going to be performed in their relationship for the glory of God. Amen. So supernatural marriage is along the same lines. It is a covenant relationship that God brings forth between male and female for his divine purposes and for his glory. That is the, 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 that is the, the basic tenet of supernatural marriage. And you're thinking to yourself that what are some of the signs? How will I know that this is a supernatural marriage? There are some things you can look out for. Number one, there is an effortless connection. There is an effortless connection. And that effortless connection happens because it is a God orchestrated connection. The same way that God created Eve, took the rib out of Adam and created Eve. And the Bible says, and God brought the woman to the man. It's the same way that the Lord will supernaturally ordain your steps. Ordain your steps. The steps of a good man or a good woman are ordained by the Lord. Hallelujah. God will ordain the steps of you as a woman and will bring you into the presence of your husband. Every supernatural relationship, every testimony that we have received has got this mark, has got this hallmark. The woman will be brought into the presence of the man. Supernaturally. You'll be brought into his presence. And the, there's an effortless connection because the man will discern and know and see you different. He will know that you are not just another woman. He will know that you're not just another connection. Something will in him will recognize that you were different. You were different. And he will look at you through the eyes of marriage from day one. From day one. From day one. This has been happening all across the nations. There are many people that have been married this way, but did not understand it was a supernatural grace that had been given to them. But I just want to encourage you that the hallmark of supernatural marriage is effortless connection. I did not say effortless relationship, 
because everyone must work out their own relationship. We must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. But I said effortless connection. It is a God orchestrated connection. There is a love connecting which is unexplainable, especially from the man. The man may not be able to explain why he feels as he feels. He may not even understand why he has that interest, why he has that heart, why he, he sees you in that light. There is nothing maybe he can, he can point to why. The Bible says that Esther found favor and found grace in, in, in the book of Esther chapter 2. He says she found favor and she found grace in the sight, in the sight of Ahasuerus, in the sight of the king. You know, the king may not have understood why, but there was something about her. He had had many women. He had had different women. They were all virgins. They were all beautiful. But there was something about Esther that, that, that he saw something different. And she received grace. She received favor. So a supernatural marriage happens by effortless connection. You must be a woman about your business. You must be a woman dedicated to the purposes of God. You must be a woman that is surrendered to the will of God for your life. You must be living your best life. You must be doing what you know to do. But I don't believe, and I haven't heard any testimonies, where the woman had to go to a certain place or a certain, a certain whatever to meet the man. God will order your steps into the presence of your husband. He will prompt you. He will persuade you. Some of you, he will prompt you, like we've just had one lady now, to go into a certain industry. He will prompt you to, to move into a certain um, area. He may prompt you to change location, to change job, to change church. He will prompt you these things. Why? Because he's ordering your steps into the presence of your husband. And as a man, your wife will be brought into your presence. You do not need to look under every green tree, but your wife will be brought onto your presence. People have met online. They have not understood how they've met, but somehow that woman has come up in his feed. Hallelujah. Somehow he has met that woman. Somehow he has crossed her path. Somehow he has seen her in the church. Somehow he has seen her walking down into the escalator. Somehow he has seen her when he was going about his business. But in, upon seeing her, there's something that prompts him that this woman is different and he begins to pursue her. Amen. So there is an effortless connection. Number two is the, the supernatural marriage. The hallmark of supernatural marriage is the man comes ready with a mindset for marriage. If you have to guess, if you have to worry, if you are anxious about how he feels about you, that is not supernatural marriage. Every supernatural marriage, the man comes ready for marriage. He comes ready with a mindset for marriage. He is looking for someone to commit to. Supernatural marriage is different to dating because in dating, people decide if they like themselves. To dating, he decides if he wants to connect to you or wants to date you or wants to see you again. In supernatural marriage, the man comes ready with a mindset to marry because God has prepared him. Either he has been raised to understand the importance of finding his helper. He's now in the zone, in the dimension of finding his wife or he has gone through a lot of failed relationships and circumstances and he has been humbled through life and he has been brought to the point and to the place of being ready and willing for marriage. God has prepared him in the background. God has prepared him behind the scenes. So you will have men, some of them have come through, 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 marriages. Some of them have already come through divorce. Some have come through separation. Some have come through broken relationships. Some have come out of prison. Some have come, they have come into the place of marriage from different positions, but it doesn't mean they're not ready. The thing that is going to identify that man to you as a potential husband for supernatural marriage is he will already possesses a mindset for marriage. He already possesses it. You will not have to convince him for marriage. In fact, it may be scary how fast he wants to seek a commitment from you. It may scare you how fast he wants to seek a commitment from you. Number three thing is supernatural marriage is confirmed. The union of supernatural marriage is confirmed by the spirit of God. It is confirmed by the spirit of God. Every supernatural marriage is confirmed by the Spirit of God and he confirms it with peace and with purpose. 
There is a peace, there is a settlement that the Lord is going to give you concerning the union. It's not only effortless, it comes with a confirmation of peace. The confirmation may come from people who are godly around you, but it will definitely come within your own soul and with your own spirit. The anxiety of you thinking that this person is not serious about it will not be available in supernatural marriage. He will be so focused on you and the man will be so focused on attaining the woman as a wife that it's going to come with a confirmation of peace. And it's going to come with a confirmation of purpose. The word of God says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord that are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. So the marriage, the union itself is called into a purpose. Not just you as individuals, but the union has been called into a purpose and God will reveal the purpose of your union early on. He will confirm your union. He will confirm your choice of each other with peace and also with purpose. There is something that he will begin to download into your heart and into your spirit. Why? Because he's bringing out these unions for his own purposes and for his glory. He's bringing out these unions because there is a kingdom assignment upon them. And upon, this, upon your marriage, the Lord is going to build there is a mission upon your marriage and it's going to send forth your marriage as a witness of Christ in the earth, as a witness of his love, as a witness of his power, as a witness of his authority, as a witness of his reality. It doesn't matter which way he's going to use you, but he will show you there is going to be a hallmark of Christ. That is why when you come together, the man knows you are his wife. Like Adam knew Eve was the wife. He said, this is the bone of my bone. This is the flesh of my flesh. Hallelujah. I know you're listening to me and I, I welcome that, but I encourage you, do not forget to go and sign up to our email list because I want to ensure that the, the word that we have continues to, to be given to you on a regular basis. And in fact, I know that tonight our team have already prepared our latest email to come out to those of you who have already subscribed. So I encourage you that don't just listen online because many times there are things that go on online that try to interfere or impede the flow of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So number three is the Spirit of God will confirm your union with peace and with purpose. With peace and with purpose. Amen, amen, amen. What was the other thing that I said to you? I said, number four, every testimony that we have received the Lord spoke to me last year and said that if I will pro pro um, proclaim the word of God prophetically to the singles, that the Lord is stirring the waters worldwide to release singles into marriage supernaturally. And he began to speak to me about why he was doing it and about the necessity for the church to be prepared, the bride of Christ, to be prepared to meet her groom, about the way that he, Jesus spoke to us in the days and said that the the days of the end will be like the days of Noah. And Noah was, was, was given a mission and a mandate to build the ark before the judgment of God came down. And what did God do? He began to call the families of Noah and the, the, the brothers, of the, the, the sons of Noah and their wives into the ark. There is something about the template about Noah that God is using in these end times. He is calling the solitary and putting them in families because it is families that are going to be called into the ark. It is husbands and wives and children that are going to be called into the ark before the judgment falls upon the earth. And we are getting very near to the, to the outpouring of God's judgment because of the rebellion and the sin that is going on on the earth. But because of these things, the Lord is preparing his church. He's preparing his church and he's preparing you and preparing your family and your home and your marriage to be the vehicle upon which he can literally drive through his agenda in these last days. The, 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 the revival in this, the last, the end time revival is not going to be a church driven revival. It's going to be a family driven revival. Why? Because families are in every community. Families are in every culture. Families are in every color. Families are in every nation. And the best way to get the gospel to go out is no longer going to be from church to church, but from family to family. Hallelujah. So this is the mind of God for supernatural marriage, that he wants people to see a living Jesus. He wants people to see you walking together. He wants people to see that it is possible to receive love and to give love. He wants people to see the fruits that can come out of a godly union. He wants people to see what it's like to live in a kingdom full of love and life. 
He wants people to see what it is like for children to grow up with mother and father. Hallelujah. He wants people to see what it is like for him to be able to restore people out of brokenness into wholeness. And he's going to do that within the picture, within the, the playground or within the prophetic picture of marriage. That is why he's saying it is a supernatural marriage. Hallelujah. And your marriage is part of the plan of God in this end time. It doesn't matter how many years you have waited. It doesn't matter how you have been frustrated, how you have been challenged. What is your sexual history? What is your relationship background? What matters to God now is are you willing to align yourself in faith and in obedience to him? Are you willing to serve him in spirit and in truth? Are you willing to allow him to align you and to connect you divinely with your godly spouse? Because if you are willing, he has put out the call. Are you willing to be married? Do you want to be married? And if the answer is yes, and you're willing to obey, you're willing to heed to his calling, he himself will supernaturally reveal and release you into marriage in Jesus' mighty name. So a three to six month window. He spoke to me that within a 12 month window, he will align those who are ready. But every supernatural marriage is confirmed from marriage to engagement with a three to six month window. Amen. Who's that? Aiti, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Effortless connection. Man comes ready. Confirmed by the Spirit of God. And number four, within a three to six month window. Most of the marriages have been, have been taken from meeting to marriage within a three to six month window. But the least of them has been taken from meeting to engagement within a three to six month window. The least of them. But 99% of every marriage, every testimony we have received, and we've received testimonies from America, we received them from Australia, we received them from Africa, we received them from the UK. 99% of them, even the ones that are around me, around my personal prayer pa ministry partner, and around my personal friends, within a three to six month window, that relationship is confirmed as a dedicated marital relationship in marriage or in engagement. So that is another key sign you will know. There is nothing like, he, he said to us, he said, it's going to be days and weeks, not months and years. That is what the Spirit of God spoke to me last year. It's going to be days and weeks, not months and years. Because we're talking about the supernatural vehicle of God. The supernatural power of God who is able to bring and to unite a people in heart, in spirit, in soul, and in marriage. Hallelujah within a three to six month window. That is what you can expect. So that's why you don't have to frustrate or worry yourself about how long you have waited. When God gets ready to release you, let me tell you, you will be, in a, you will be, in, you will be married before you can blink. You will be married before you can blink. And even now, we're in, we're in October, and the Lord has, has said to me that there are still many more weddings there are still many more relationships waiting to be connected this year, this year. So I want you to have the faith. I want you to be encouraged. And I want you to tap into what God is saying. In this month of October, he has spoken to us that we must raise up and encourage people to raise up an altar of praise. Praise. Many of you have been praying, but now it's time to kick it to another level and begin to praise God for your marriage. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the vehicle and the power of praise is able to confound and to defeat that final hindrance that is delaying or frustrating the release of your marriage in Jesus mighty name. So you, we're going to raise up an altar of praise for seven days between the 14th and the 20th of October. We're going to raise up an altar of praise. We'll be releasing information on our email. So go and make sure you're part of that. And we'll be, take, and we'll be um, communicating this on our prayer calls every Thursday on Facebook Live. And that's 9 p.m. Eastern time every Thursday on Facebook Live. And it's a private group, but you can join it. Again, you can go to the link. The two shall be one on Facebook Live. The two shall be one. We have it every Thursday, every Thursday. So begin to raise up an altar of prayer. Hallelujah. You know, some of you will be connected this year and married next year. But some of you will be connected this year and married this year. It all depends on the, the counsel of God and of, for your life and the dynamics of your situation. But what I want you to understand is there is still a crop. There is a harvest God is looking for because he himself is divinely driving through the agenda of marriage. Because this was his original intention for our life. 
He did not build his kingdom with a male. He did not build his kingdom with a female. He built his kingdom upon male and female coming together. And he blessed them in Genesis 1.27. And blessed them. And he said to them in Genesis 1.28, be fruitful, be multiplied, subdue, and take dominion. So the authority and the dominion of God is dependent upon the strength of our marriages. He said, for this reason, for this reason will a man leave mother and father and cleave unto his wife. For what reason? For the reason of God being empowering us to obey his dominion mandate. For the reason of him empowering you to go out there and to be a witness unto all people. Jesus said, go into every nation, every people, every tongue, preach the gospel. The gospel is not just preached with words. The gospel is preached by observation. The gospel is preached when we begin to walk in the ways of the Lord. The gospel is preached when people can observe you and see the fruits of what happens in people's lives when they follow Jesus Christ. And when they're walking together in, in union, in agreement and in love. Hallelujah. Because God is love. So the highest expression of God on the earth must be a love relationship. Amen. I taught some of you earlier on that the word of God says that Jesus was the fullness of God bodily. When you read Colossians 3.15, it says Jesus was the fullness of God bodily. He was the only person who walked this earth that embodied God. The fullness of God bodily. He was the only living human being that embodied God fully in male nature and female nature was both in Jesus. But for us to see the fullness of God on the earth is going to take males and females coming together in holy matrimony for God's glory and for his purpose. Amen. That is another reason why I declare upon your life that your marriage shall spring forth. You may have been frustrated, but in the mighty name of Jesus, you shall enter into holy matrimony. You may have been rejected. You may have been abandoned. You may have been abused, but God now is stirring the waters and decreeing upon your life that now is your season. Now is your time. He has heard your cry. He has heard your call and he is coming down and he is beginning with the singles. He's also healing broken relationships, married relationships, but he's beginning with the singles. He's releasing them because they have waited upon the Lord and he has heard their cry and he's taking them out of their singleness and putting them into families. I was telling you the testimonies, some of the testimonies that we have had. We've had people who've been engaged within five days and married within five months, hallelujah. We've had people who've been um, married within three months, married within four months, married within six months. We've had people who've been engaged. Many engagements have sprung out. Amen. In fact, four of my personal friends have either got married or engaged. Four of my personal friends and my own sister has also been approached for marriage. Hallelujah. So let me tell you, I've been seeing the, the spirit of God moving mightily through the ministry. And I myself, I was laughing to you guys that, listen, I myself, I'm still here. I myself, I'm not yet taken. But trust me, the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. Because he said to me that we must press through in prayer and in praise. And in the midst of many weddings, in the midst of many marriages, in the midst of much celebration, my one will, will spring out. Hallelujah. So I trust in the Lord. And I'm speaking the word of God to you, knowing that God is faithful. He is not just doing it in my life. He's doing it in your life. He's doing it in the lives of men and women up and down the nations. He's not just doing it in the, in the Caucasian community. He's doing it in the black community. He's doing it in the Asian community. Hallelujah. He's not just doing it for the young. He's doing it for those who have waited on the Lord. He's doing it for those that are mature in Christ. Amen. Don't exempt yourself. Whatever the enemy is speaking into your ears, the devil is a liar. God himself is mindful of you as his child. God himself is mindful of your loneliness. He is mindful of what you have felt. He is mindful of, of the way you have, you have fought and battled in the area of relationship. But now, supernaturally, he's using his power on your behalf. He's anointing on your behalf to divinely connect you and to bring you into a loving relationship for his name's sake. That is very important. So supernatural marriage is an effortless connection. Supernatural marriage, the man comes ready with a mindset for marriage. Supernatural marriage, another sign is that it's within a three to six month window that the marriage is confirmed or the engagement is confirmed. 
Another sign is number four, that supernatural marriage, the spirit of God himself will confirm that union, will confirm your union or your choice of partner with peace and with purpose. And supernatural marriage has got a calling upon it, has got a calling upon it, has got a kingdom assignment upon it, which the Lord will reveal to you in due time. Amen. You've got to live in expectation because I have seen it with my own eyes. You know, many people, even church folk, there is an indignation in the, in the, even in the body of Christ, some church leaders, even some believers are rising up in indignation and are saying, you know, how can we put people's eyes on marriage and they should only be on Christ. And Christ, Jesus said to me that tell them, I want to glorify my name through the, in their life, through their marriage. God wants to glorify his name in your life through your marriage. So I am not taking your mind away from Christ. I am just putting your mind on the counsel of God for your life and for your marriage. And I encourage you, if you feel that marriage may be an idol in your heart, there are many idols. Sometimes there are desires that you have in your heart that may be more than the desires of God for your life. But all you need to do is dedicate it. Be like Hannah and dedicate your marriage to God and say, God, if you will look upon me, if you will release me into marriage, if you will honor me with a spouse, then I will dedicate my marriage to you all the days of my life. That is what pleases the Father. That is what pleases God. Because all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. He wants you to live for him. He wants you to live for his purposes. He wants you to glorify him. And that includes your marriage. Amen. God bless you. Make sure you go to the email.